A hallucination is a sensation without a stimulus. But why do hallucinations occur? To answer that, we have to look at perception itself. We think of perception as a passive process. An input arrives and is received. But actually, perception is more like a guess of what is out there in our environment. It's the result of sensory input, sure, but also another component that may be just as important, our prior beliefs or expectations. Some scientists think that hallucinations occur when strong beliefs create an imbalance with sensory input. To see if they could witness this overpowering of external input by beliefs, researchers created a game that caused auditory hallucinations and observed the effects on brains and behavior. Their experiment is a twist on Pavlovian training. Whereas Pavlov's dog learned to associate food with sound, instead the scientists trained human players to associate sight with sound. In the game, a checkerboard flashes on and a tone is played simultaneously. With enough repetitions, participants start to expect to hear the sound when they see the image, even when the sound isn't actually played. They were played the tone at different intensities and sometimes no tone at all. As the game went on, there were more and more no tone events. The participants were asked to press a button each time they heard the tone. They were also told to press longer based on their confidence in their judgment. When players were presented a checkerboard without the tone but still pressed the button, that was considered a hallucination. Four different groups were selected to play. A control group that didn't have a history of hallucinations or psychosis, daily hallucinators with no diagnosed psychotic illness, non-hallucinators with psychotic illness, and finally daily hallucinators with a psychotic illness. Crunching the data, researchers found that all participants experienced conditioned hallucinations during the game. The people who already heard voices were the most susceptible to the effect, and were the most confident they heard tones when none were actually played. Brain scans conducted during the game showed what regions were activated when conditioned hallucinations occurred. Researchers then devised a model for hallucination that provided different weights for beliefs and inputs. Fitting the behavioral data into the model, they found that hallucinators do overweight beliefs, and this correlates with regions of the brain that we know relate to perceptual beliefs. Those with psychosis were less able to update their beliefs, which corresponded with activity in the hippocampus and cerebellum, which typically guide our memories and our sensory and motor predictions about our bodies and the world. The model suggests that when players without psychosis were trained in the game, they formed a strong belief that the sound would coincide with the checkerboard. But as the game progressed, they caught on that more no-tone trials were being played because they were able to update their beliefs. The players with psychosis, on the other hand, had trouble adapting as the game changed. The next steps are to use larger sample sizes and machine learning tactics to further distinguish between voice hearers with and without psychosis. The hope is that researchers could diagnose if a hallucinator is on a path to psychosis and suggest more targeted treatments in the future.